recording is in progress. I want to thank you for joining us tonight at uh, Los Angeles Videography, um, where the focus of this meetup is uh, let's make a short film and I'll work together. And uh, we had a great meetup last week and I will post the link again on the video if people were not able to come and you can watch it at your convenience. I think it will be really helpful. And um, I've, uh, I started this particular uh, Los Angeles videography and um, I am being joined as a, my co-host by uh, Richard Rodin. Am I pronouncing it correct? Rickard Rodin. Oh God, I am the worst. <laughs> Rodin. I'll get it. Fair enough. I'll buy a few more. more we episodes. all have hard names to pronounce. Yeah, Rick, yeah Rickard Rodin. Okay, and um, um, Rickard is going to be our guest speaker tonight uh, because he had a um, a meetup group. Um, let's make a short film, and they made several short films uh, using meetup. And he's going to share with us what that was like, how he did it, what the criteria was. Um, I will jump in while you're speaking to ask you some questions, and then we'll open it up uh, to Q&A afterwards and discuss possible uh, projects that we can start uh, making in the very near future. So I'm going to turn it over to you, sir. All right. Well, um, yeah, so I think it was in 2016, we started a meetup group uh, called Let's Make a Short. And the meetup group would meet um, once every two weeks or every month. Um, and we would meet on one weekend, do all the planning, and then the weekend after, um, which would be a Saturday, we would spend all, all Saturday shooting. So basically it was a two week process for each short film. The first week was the planning and then the second week was the actual shooting. Can and I then obviously you there was here? you know a month of post-production um, on each one. But generally what I found is that when you're doing a short film with a meetup, the time that you have to do the short film is the times you're actually meeting. Um, and what I mean by that is there was, no, there was no way that I was able to organize it so that we could have multiple projects going at once or anything like that. It very much was one project until it was done onto the next project. And the make or break for every project was having um, someone willing to take the project from beginning to end. So basically someone who owned it, you know, a producer slash director who completely owned it. Um, and that person, you know, they're obviously gonna have most of the credit for the short film when it's done. So that person was also expected to, you know, buy pizza for lunch, whatever funds were necessary. We did in for the because we were doing it meetup style, uh, very guerrilla filmmaking. I did have like a hard rule that no one was paid. Um, that way we don't end up with, you know, 20 people showing up to work on it. And then two of those people are being paid. Doesn't seem fair. So. We did have a hard rule for the meetup. No one gets paid except for in credits. Um, so obviously the person who is gonna get the most credit for the short film is the one who's contributing the most to it. Um, now the, the, the cons or like the pitfalls we ran into was deciding on what to shoot. <laughs> um, and then also like part of the problem that we ran into is that I ultimately ended up being the executive producer or director for every project that we did. 
And that wasn't sustainable for me because now every weekend I was running a group of filmmakers. <laughs> it was completely not, pro you know, there was no profit involved. It was just, we were having a lot of fun doing it. And we did, we made five films. Matt, actually I met Matt first a few years ago on one of those weekend projects. He was in one of the short films. Um, but I think we ended up shooting a total of seven, but only five of them actually finished. Two of the other ones kind of died in post-production. Um, and that's, you know, that's always a, a, a barrier to, to get more, like most people don't want to work on something that doesn't get finished and then work on a second thing that also might not get finished. So, so long as films were actually getting finished and out to the world, we had people contributing. Um, as like soon as it became like, I can't be doing this every weekend anymore, there was no longer an executive producer for the film and it just kind of fell between the cracks. So that's kind of the long, uh, long and short of what happened. After that, I tried to turn over the group to someone else nothing came of it. And now then COVID hit. So nobody was doing anything. After COVID, I want to get, I want to start making short films again. I'm guessing that's why all of you are here. Um, so I saw this uh, meetup group. I actually thought it was the, the, you know, someone else had taken over the group and was doing it. So I jumped on board. Um, yeah, that's the long and the short of it. I would say the most important things is for every project we do, someone needs to own it entirely. They have to be willing to run people. They have to be willing to give orders. They have to be, you know what I mean? Like you have to be willing to lead people if you're gonna do this and you have to be entirely responsible for taking your film through the process, we're all gonna be here to help you, but it's still your film, you have to get it completed. That's kind of like the deal you're making is, we're gonna help you for free, but you have to finish it. Any questions? I, I, have, a, I have a few questions. Can you yeah, hear me? Sure. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, okay. Uh, a few things. Um, you, so you uh, met the week before to prep. Yes. Prior to that, um, what kind of preparation went into deciding which script, right. film you okay. were So I'll tell you a few things we tried. I'm not going to say anyone was super successful because at the end of the day, almost every script that we did eventually shoot, I either co-wrote or personally selected, right? So it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of democracy to it. Um, so take it with a grain of salt. But what we did was we had a, comp like not a competition, but we had uh, people could enter their script in Facebook and then we had people vote on the scripts. So let's say, you know, there was 15 people, 10 people submitted a script. I posted them on the Facebook group with a poll and by the end of the week, whichever one had the most votes is the one we ended up doing. That, we, that was one method that we did. Another method we did was we had people come to the meeting and each one had to give an elevator pitch and whichever one we liked the most was good. Show me the script for it. We'll work it over over the next week. By next week, we'll have a final script. And that's what we're shooting. Approximately. How did that work? How many would you say was from the elevator pitch? How many was from people submitting and voting? I think the elevator pitch worked better. Okay. Um, although, you know, obviously there, there is a force of personality involved anytime you're meeting in a group and deciding on something, whoever has the strongest personality might win over whoever has the strongest script. Let me ask you, I mean, um, I was just thinking about as you were speaking, is it possible um, that you could share that film you sent me the link and we oh, could yeah. watch it together? I, I can either you can send it to me and I can screen share or I can have I'll just, you. I'll post, a, I'll post a link in the. Uh, 
Okay, and um, and we can maybe watch it together. It's it's not very long. Yeah, it's not long at all. Actually, we could, and then I could kind of provide. That's what I'd like to do. That would be. Is that the one called the feeding? Uh, the provider. The provider. Yeah, yeah. That was that was quite quite good too. It's it's what I really loved about it was it was a really good short film. It was well, like that's what beginning, a middle, and end. It was wonderful. It really was. It was terrific. Let's take a look at it. Uh, I'm waiting one, if you're I mean, uh, this was the first one we did, and it's definitely the favorite of all the ones that we did. Uh, I don't see it here. Did you post it? No, sorry. I'm trying to figure out where this uh, share function is on Vimeo. Oh, here it is. Oh, just put it in the chat, and I or I can I can click on it and then screen share. Okay, everybody. Here it is. Okay, let okay, me. Okay, so me, I'll give a little backstory to this. Let me. Why don't you go ahead and give the backstory before I screen share? Okay. Um, although I think most people are better off just watching it on their own. We can all like hit play at the same time because trying well, to screen share is going to have some stream. Well, let's let's try screen sharing it and see if that works. And Let the work speak for itself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's a nice piece. Let me yeah. get it ready. But I will tell you in terms of organization. So this one. I had the idea, so I did the elevator pitch. People liked it. We decided that was what we were going to shoot. Um, we planned it one weekend, meaning we all met. The actress said, hey, I have a kind of nice horror looking house. Great. So that became the location. Um, we had the, um, the actor in it. Um, the kids are my kids. Um, meaning the little girl, I have twins, identical twins. So they're actually both in it playing in different scenes. Um, the actor, um, he was someone we met at the meetup. He came and did it. Uh, we started shooting at 9 a.m. and we finished at 10 p.m. Uh, we had a crew of about 20 people show up. So quite a few people. Let's uh, take a look and let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's, let's watch it's, it. It's, it's, how, sorry, just before we start, how many people did you say? We had about 20 people on the crew to shoot this. Like we had an AD, a deputy. Like crew, not including talent. Yeah. That's a lot of people for a short month. Yeah, let's, let's take it a look. At it. we, we had a very good turnout. Okay, it's, four, it's a little under four minutes, guys.
There you have it. Very good, very good. Um, I thought it was, uh, was uh, I hope everybody got the, the concept to her. Um, the <laughs> yeah, hook at the end there. It's a little laggy, but um, yeah, you got to see the most of it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I also thought the, uh, I was really impressed with the, uh, the cinematography on this as well. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yeah, we kind of lucked out because we had, there was a German uh, director of photography who was in town shooting interviews with the Oscar nominees. And he had his own red camera and he's a pretty well-established cinematographer in Germany. He happened to see our meetup uh, wrote to me and said, hey, I'll come and be your DP if you rent some batteries for me. I said, sure. He showed up. Uh, I rented the batteries and he shot the entire thing for us. It was amazing. Great. And uh, for some of you, uh, I, I'm not sure how clear that was, uh, screen sharing and all that. You have the link there. You can take a look at it on your own time as well. Uh, maybe you'll, you can get a better quality out of that. Um, so, anybody have any questions about the film? Well, or about the making of it. Yeah, the make, that's what I meant, the making of the what film. What did you, uh, what software did you use to do the post-production? Um, After Effects. After Effects for so like... The, the Creative uh, Cloud. The Girl Face. The, the, yeah, right, but there was the Creative Cloud you used Premiere Pro for the whole thing? Uh, yeah, for the editing, yes, Premiere Pro. Yeah. It's okay. good. I, I really like the film. Although the fact that you don't have sound, you could have done easily the whole thing in After Effects. Well, um, you have to edit. Yeah, so in After Effects, you can do it too. I, I do a lot. I used to do a lot of my like videos because I had so many effects, just directly problem, in After yeah. Effects, like you music can, videos. You can. The it's, problem with After Effects for editing is the, it has to render each time you play back. Premiere doesn't have to do that. Oh, yeah. It's for such a short, yeah. Yeah. What, um, so the gear besides his camera, like lighting and everything, do you rent all that or is that just sourced from everyone else? Um, that, the, so we had um, a grip who came, who bought a whole bunch of grip equipment. We had two lighting people who came and they brought their own lighting gear. So the only thing I had to rent for that entire shoot was batteries for the red. And then I had to buy pizza for everyone for lunch. That was my budget. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the music? Um, so that I had a friend who did the music. Okay, so it was original music. Can you talk about the short division for this? Actually, I like the, um, the cut and uh, the kind of the angle of the camera. So can you, is it anything technical side? Can you talk about the short division? Which one? Short division, the camera side actually. So how you planned uh, in the scripting itself, you guys planned like where to place uh, the camera and where uh, to shoot. To be honest, because it was such a, you know, guerrilla sh short film, like, we didn't have access to the location until that morning because it was her house. Um, so really, we, we planned it while we were there. We had the script. We had a basic idea of which shots we wanted. But it was more me, the DP, the AD, and the main gaffer just meeting um, at the beginning of the shoot day we went through, decided where all the shots were gonna happen, kind of decided the flow of everything. Um, and then the grip people went to work on preparing the locations that we needed in the house. Um, and we started setting up the living room. And while we were setting up the living room, they were getting like the hallway and the upstairs bedroom ready for shooting. Yeah, I like the one, the scene where mom calls her uh, it's time then the bring it to the upstairs, right? Uh, yeah. The time she switch on the light, that is the time you focus the phase actually in full. Till the time I think the share, the, the phase is kind of dull. Uh, there's no much lighting. Yeah. Uh, kind of no when switch on the light, that time the focus on the phase actually. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, now, was any uh, were these people you had your pre-production meeting a week before? Were any did you meet any of these people at the pre-production meeting? Yes, all of them. All of them. So they uh, were everybody who came. Actually, there was some extra people, but most of the people who came on shooting day were the same people who met the prior week and we had our basically our pre-production meeting that's when we decided on the script that's when we decided on the cast that's when we decided on the location um and we had saturday as a pretty set shooting day so we didn't have to decide that um we just determined everything else and how long was your pre-production meeting uh i think it was a couple hours we met at a pizza pizza like a blaze pizza in pasadena right went outside on the patio had had our lunch and kind of discussed the project over lunch for about an hour and a half two hours but prior to that you did not uh know what film you were going to make at that point yeah there were other possibilities correct yeah hmm, that's interesting that's interesting so oh. What's that? My cat, he's been noisy. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, and what uh, you may have already said this, but what was the post uh, time on this afterwards? Uh, the post time was probably two months or a month. About two months. Okay. Uh, a little less. I think it was about a month and a half. Yeah. And did you, uh, what have you done with the film? Have you? Uh, just posted it. <laughs> I need to, I need someone who's uh, good at like festivals and stuff. Cause right. I have no idea about any of that stuff. I just like making them. Right. And speaking of making them, you've, I spoke to you earlier this evening and you volunteered potentially to uh, direct the first project. Uh, and I would be kind of help out as, you know, an executive producer, yeah. put it together. Um, yeah, and I invited Matt, cause he sent me a script this week that he wants to get made. Okay. That I, I like the script, I would be willing to shoot it. Um, I already like Matt, I'm guessing he wrote it as himself as the main character because he's an actor. Um, so we already have one of the three cast members. I have an idea for the other one. Um, Would you two like to share the idea to the group? Uh, yeah, Matt, you want to pitch your idea? Uh, you're on mute. And your video is turned off. Are you there, Matt? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're unmuted. You're still muted. And yeah, no video. Maybe he's not there right now. Okay. I'll give the pitch. The basic. Do you guys remember a couple of years ago when there was a news story about like a metal monolith? showing up in one of the national parks i don't remember if you guys well, I, remember, here. I remember i remember, I remember that. that yes okay so that kind of is the background premise uh matt do you want to pitch like give the elevator pitch for your short idea yeah sorry i had to step out because my agent called me but uh hello <laughs> uh so i have a script um I, by the way, my name is Matt Edwards. I'm an actor and a second year MFA student in screenwriting. Uh, I have a bunch of scripts that I would love to shoot, but uh, this one I just sent to Rickard uh, is about the, the monolith that appeared in Red Rock, Utah, I think in 2020, and it was a big news story and everybody's talking about it and said it reminded them of um, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Um, and to get into my program, I wrote a like eight page short about these two friends who go on a road trip to find the monolith uh, and basically get abducted. Uh, and that was kind of like the short premise of it. And I've really wanted to shoot it. And um, this 
This year in my adaptation class, I expanded that story to a, a 15 page script with more of a backstory um, uh, with more kind of character stuff happening in it and some more locations. Um, this script, I don't know that it would work under the format that I used to shoot with, with Rickard. It would be a, a lengthy, um, it wouldn't be a one weekend thing because uh, there are locations involved. It would have to be shot either in Joshua Tree or Chatsworth or something like that with the, the desert locations. Uh, I would have I was, to build- When I read uh, it, I was thinking Joshua Tree. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, you know, I'd, I'd have to build a, an actual monolith that looks like the original one. And, um, you know, it would take uh, a lot of hands and, and a lot of crew members. Uh, I do plan on, there, there are two parts acting wise, uh, both are male characters. I do plan on playing one of the characters. The other one hasn't been cast yet. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the short version of it. Um, I'm really excited about it and trying to figure out how I'm going to make it all work and how much money I want to legitimately put into it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where it's at at the moment. You're muted. You're mute, Stephen. Sorry about that. I think that's great, Matt. My only concern is, uh, like you said, um, it, it would it, it's a it's a longer shoot, and I think that that might be something to do further down the line. But initially, I think we should do something along the lines that we saw earlier, that is between three and five minutes. Uh, one location, uh, possibly two locations, uh, or one location interior and the same location exterior, and then see how we all work together and then explore doing longer short films. Yeah, um, I do tend to agree with that. I do think for our first project, we should do something nice and simple. Um, Just as a general, whatever, I do think horror um, is the low hanging fruit, you know, making doing a horror short that is intriguing and, you know, has some bite to it is a lot easier to pull off than a drama or a comedy, both of which are much harder to do than horror. So I would propose doing a short horror as our first, just because it's the easiest to do. Um, keep it to like three minutes with a nice uh, twist at the end. I uh, would add on that a horror or thriller type thing, you know, just or 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 it really anything that. Uh, I mean, I I agree that that's an easy thing to do, but also if, if there's something else that has a, I've seen many short films, three to five minutes, that are intriguing. Uh, that have a twist to it. What, and it, it, it could be drama. It could be uh, a comedic uh, tied to it, but certainly sticking in, within one genre would, is helpful. Yeah, I, I, I oh, oh, sorry. I, I have sent you a script. It's kind of a thriller. I think I saw it, I wrote it about for, for, this, for this meetup group. And I send you uh, to your email. It's, I believe it kind of uh, meets the requirements about uh, few locations and a genre. Um, I, I think I read it, but I, I read a couple. So what, do you want to- uh, It's uh, too bad. Again, please. Again? Yeah. Uh, Give your elevator pitch. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, so sorry for, uh, so if I'm going to have a problems with my English, I'm sorry. Uh, so it's a story about, uh, oh my God, I didn't prepare. Okay, I will try to do that. Uh, so idea behind is that uh, sometimes uh, kids, kids believe that um, there are the reasons of separation of their parents and they try to try to kind of um, make it work again. And this story is about a female, which is 25 years old and who is living with, with her dad and it's a near future. So she find out there is a technology when you can put a memories to the head of the person 
So uh, his dad, uh, every day, he's leaving the family and she's trying every day to put a memory, new memories in his life about, in his, it's in, in his head about, about good stuff happened to their family. So believing that he might stay and he's continuing living and living. And so this is a main idea. And so, but the script is built as a thriller. So we don't understand what's happening. And only by the end, uh, there is a understanding kind of uh, what, what is she doing and why, what was the reason of that? I, I did, I did read it. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I thought, uh, again, in the framework of doing a three to five minute film, that, that w w was a difficult story to tell. Um, also, it's real important to everybody. I, I, a couple of people did submit me some things um, to have it in a in the correct format. I mean, it, it needs to be in a screenplay format. Um, um, there are some fantastic um, um, applications available uh, to to do that, um, but uh, if just from for your own practice, um, I think that's real important. Um, if you have dialogue and a description, to put it in the, the proper format for it for everyone to review. Um, yeah, and sometimes it gets tricky because even just thinking about the memories that you've got to put in, if you're going to do like some kind of montage with that, you have to film like all the different memories that you're going to show in the video and that becomes like yeah. having different locations and no i, I thought it was a different it was you a know difficult that that would that in itself becomes more challenging yeah yeah I, yeah i thought it was a you know i thought it was a difficult project for us to do personally um i, I, I did, did i, I, I have... do think the the idea of false memories um is good fodder for for a short film Mm -hmm. False memories is is immediately intriguing, and then if the reveal is that the daughter is actually implanting it, like I do think we could turn that into a script that would work. Um, I'm well, not. Why don't you email uh, him the script and he can take a look? I I did read it. Not that was my initial response to it, but uh, you know, it's all subjective. I can I can send it because uh, I tried to uh, because uh, I don't I tried to not put any additional kind of because I understood that location is there are two locations and it should be easy to do so I tried to, when I wrote that I tried to all the problems about putting memories to make it easy to kind of to implement not not different locations it's just it's just a kind of a computer program printerist when she's downloading pictures and putting kind of into the application. And so thank you, Richard, uh, for, for, for a good feedback. And I would appreciate if, uh, if, if, the, group, if the members can read it and also- Well, let me ask you this. What is your, do you, is this something you want to direct? Um, no, I am not. I never have, I, I'm, I'm writing. So I never had an experience to direct. Mm -hmm. And so that's it. I just would like to, if it's, po if it's possible to, to write, I can change it a little bit if if group would be interested to shoot it. Send it to help. me, I'll take a look. Yeah, and if about, if someone wants, would be interested to direct, I it's it's kind of I'm writer <laughs> here. No, I'm not, I don't have any ambitions to direct that. Okay. I, I do have a question, actually, just like, because, uh, you know, when you have 20 people, how do you decide, like, who's going to do what? You know what I'm saying? Like, who is going to be doing this? And who is, is it just the interests kind of lined up perfectly? Or, do you know what I mean? Like, that, most, that to me, I would imagine. I imagine most people here have a skill set that yeah. they intend on contributing. So, and if you have multiple people. So, Rickard, how did the process go in your meetups? So, you like this is our second meetup. W what 
what is the steps from your experience we need to take to get into production and to get in production as soon as possible? Well, first is we need to decide on a script. Uh, we need to decide what we're going to shoot. Um, now, to get to that point, we could have people submit scripts. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> is having, having a good idea to shoot is the hardest thing. I mean, it's the hardest part. And what are you... In a nutshell, other than the genre, what criteria uh, would- I would say, let's keep it to three minutes. So three pages of script, um, that keeps it nice and short. Uh, that's something we can accomplish in one day. Um, and then the other things that uh, your friend said last time we met, you know, it should, have a clear beginning, middle, and end. It should have a twist at the end. Um, you don't have uh, like a B story. You don't have a lot of character building. You're kind of throwing someone into the middle of something and letting them catch up at the end. It's kind of at least what I found to be the most successful with shorts is just, you know, start it in the story throw them in there, let them catch up. People like, you know, figuring things out for themselves. So don't, don't try to make it too easy for the audience. Just throw them in there, make sure they can follow it and then have a twist ending. Yeah, I, I have two films um, that I'm interested in that are shorts, but one, um, not, and it has a hook to it. Both of them have a hook to it. Uh, but one, 90% of it takes place in a car and it's at, and it's at night. Um, so um, these days they have, uh, they actually shoot in cars and they have virtual backgrounds as they're driving in the car. Uh, but to accomplish that on this level, I think it would be difficult. And, uh, but it has a, it has a really interesting hook to it. So the last short that I shot, which I shot last year, and I'm right at the tail end of getting it through post-production, was um, entirely car-based because it's about a, a, a rideshare driver, like an Uber driver. Um, and... The way we did that was I rented a, not rented, <laughs> I bought from Costco a 50 inch TV with the intent of returning it when I was done. <laughs> um, and then we just put that behind the car, set up all the lighting and the camera so that it only looked at the passenger and the back, uh, back window. And we shot all of it in my garage. I'd love to see how it looks. It looks what, are, what, what about uh, when like you a homemade virtual studio? <laughs> exactly. What What about if you do side cuts? You know, if you want to cut, if you're cutting, if they're sitting both in the front seat, for example, and, and you want to cut back and forth between the two of them, you want to shoot uh, this way or this way. Is there a way inexpensively to accomplish that? Um, Move the television. <laughs> I mean, it all gets more complicated the more you want to do. But I will. Let me see if I can do a screenshot because this will kind of show you. I have a question about. I mean, you guys are you guys shooting with? Do you have insurance? Anything going on with that? Or you know, the big question there. Do you guys sign contracts? Do you guys, you know, release of like no payment? You know. Are you, you like really what's all the legal executive stuff? But what? Well, what's did you that? attend the meeting last week? If you heard what Mark said, and um, there's an outline. I mean, that's that's theoretically the process where you do need all that. Right, but I'm just saying, dude. Like, like Rickard, did you shoot with any of that last time, or was it all just? No. 
No, I, w- I mean, I, I was actually chatting to Stephen in, in our last meeting that I've never had a permit ever. Um, and I've shot an entire like 15, 20 minute short film in downtown LA. We did have the cops pull up one time and the entire extent of it was they gave us a business card that said on the back, get out of jail free. And they told us, get a permit next time. So, I mean, so long as you're a small crew, you're not going to be bothered. It's, it's... Um, I'm going to share that screenshot real quick. Um, let's see. Yeah, I used to have um, insurance that would cover like multiple projects. It was like an umbrella coverage. And... Oh, but here's the uh, t- a big screen TV in the background. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to send you one because we did also shoot with a passenger and on a couple of them we did green screen um, although we tried to avoid that as much as possible well, I could. the more I could, VFX you have the harder it's going to get I could pitch my, the idea I mean I have, I have or I have two and the other involves ki- uh, you know uh, a kid and uh, animals so this is another <laughs> difficult thing to deal with you know but, kids are rough. Yeah. My own kids are rough. Like I had them in another, sh- like, <laughs> that, yeah. Direct. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to screen share this picture you just sent me and I'm interested how, uh, just one second, screen share. Okay. This photo right here. Um, so yeah, you have the sides uh what what are we seeing on the side on on this one it's actually a green screen we had we just had a green screen behind them in the garage Mm -hmm. and then i added a different background in post okay but for all and because that shot is stationary meaning they're parked during that conversation we didn't have to have the background moving um so it wasn't that important to have the tvs but for all the actual driving shots we had the tvs in the background yeah, in a, in a minute or so, I'll just tell you the, the short story that I uh, came across and want to adapt. And it's a story, uh, it takes place at night. In the short story, it's actually raining really hard on an empty highway. This guy's driving down the highway. He sees sort of a, a guy on the side of the road, strange looking guy hitchhiking, and he feels... Um, he feels uh, bad for the guy. He's out there alone. He picks him up in the car and the guy's acting very strange, the, the man that he picked up. And we think that there's something wrong with this guy. And then we hear on the radio that uh, someone had escaped from prison, from a mental institution. And, uh, uh, and the, our guy, the driver's asking him questions and we think it's this guy. And he goes on to explain later on, we hear in a news report on the radio that the, the person who uh, escaped uh, stole the car and is, and is dressed this certain way. And it turns out it's the driver, he's the bad guy. And once our guy who's the passenger finds out he pulls a gun at him and is about to blow his brains out and we're out. You know, that's a great twist. I know. I know. And, uh, and there's good dialogue between the two. Um, and, uh, but I, and I'd love to produce it. Uh, but I'm just, my concern was 70% of it takes place at, night in the car being at night is a good thing um because then you're you're less conscious we'd have to shoot some pickup uh of a highway you know exterior with car driving down it but 90 percent of it takes place inside the car yeah so i like that idea yeah I have a friend who has a home on a dead end street and but it's like it's like there's no it's like a canyon down the other sides so literally we would have that whole corner if you needed to film outdoors with like rain and you know how they do the fake lights where it looks like you're passing through lights on the outside just 
and how they do that where they pass the lights like that. So yeah. if you wanted to do a stationary shot doing with the lights and rain, she has the hose hook up right there. She's right on the end of the street. No other people are there. Like there's no homes other than on the one side of her house. So I would offer that location. She would be totally comfortable with us filming something there. Well, I'll, I'll so. post the short story. Um, I came across it um, in uh, searching for short stories. And uh, we could discuss if, some, if it's something we want to pursue and, um, you know, what, ob uh, what yeah. obligation we would have to the <laughs> writer who is an unknown writer, you know. Yes. If, yeah, if you didn't write that, that complicates things. <laughs> yes, I, I did not. I did not. Um, okay. Excuse me, question. Um, what do you think about a prison escape, like a house escape? So you go with your in-laws or newly married and you go to a lakeside cottage, similar to get out, but um, it turns out they all know each other, it's unplanned, and they're all kind of like these aliens, different people. And you just sort of going from door to door to door, seeing your whole family you've known, but uh, they act differently. They're totally different people. And they just shut their doors and eventually trying to find the way out. Lights are out. It's all dark. And eventually your parent shuts the door and you're done. What do you think? So I, I didn't catch what the... I, I don't, yeah. I didn't, just an idea. I, had yeah an idea. I, didn't, I didn't either. So yeah, the I, idea is... I don't know what this... Yeah, I didn't get the idea. So, a guy shows up at a lake house. Yeah. Who else is there? Basically, it's like this. So it's just an idea I had just now. And I wonder what you know what you guys think about it. So let's say you're newly married. You can be a man or woman. Let's say mid, late 20s. You yeah. go to your spouse. You're with your family in the car. Okay. You go to a lakeside cottage to your in-laws. Okay. You have dinner. It's a nice, this is a backdrop. Amazing time, perfect, absolutely 10 out of 10. Couldn't go any better. Then something happens, something's in the drink. I get the shot of like some sort of bug is in the neck. There's a horror element comes in, a neck of a person. Time passes, you wake up, and then you're in the basement in this dungeon setup. People have been there before, it's all kind of dead. And then you gotta find your way out, except that as you go through the rooms, you see your family, you've known act completely differently and it turns out they all know each other and then the person you trust the most your spouse so i just changed it from parent to spouse spouse shuts the front door and that sort of spells doom hmm. what do you think it sounds complicated it needs uh it needs yeah. some yeah. it needs more of a twist it yeah. needs something unexpected that you kind of go whoa you know what i mean like some some kind of twist okay something just unexpected I'll post that I mean, story. That, because the premise of like, you know, the fish out of water going into it. I mean, that's obviously very uh, fertile grounds for any story. Um, but we do need that twist, you know, that sets it apart from that basic premise, which we've seen a million times. Cool, cool. I, I just want to do a quick raise of hands here. How many of the people here um, write their stories. If, if well, actually, can, if you put it in the, can you raise your hand in the? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we got four or five people here. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like most of us are writers. Right. Right. Steve, I got a question. Uh, I mean, if most so of us are writers. What we should do is plan a meeting for next week, okay. where everybody comes with at least one or two elevator pitches, and by the end of the meeting, we know which one we're going to shoot. Cool. Okay. Someone asked me, a, had a question for me? Yes, yeah, Steve, that's it's me. Uh, Steve, I was wondering, um, I had the right kind of software, the package, and I can't remember the name of it. I was wondering if you could give me a couple names of the classic screenwriting software. A, a final draft. Final draft, that was it. Yeah, that's what I use. That's, that's, the, one. that's the industry standard. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thank you. And you can actually write in Word and then... Uh, import it into Final Draft, and it'll it 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 will help format it. Um, it. That's something people do. 
Yeah, I had it on an old computer and I don't think, I just got a new computer. I don't think the application moved over. It's not that expensive, right? It's not that expensive, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. It's a couple thank, hundred thank, bucks. thank you. Yeah. Well, I like that idea. Why don't we um, have set up for a week from tonight, a pitch meeting uh, and uh, everybody figure to pitch about a minute to a minute and a half their idea, quick pitch of what it is. And um, then we can uh, review it. And do we want to have uh, parameters? I think we've kind of laid out some parameters unless there's, I, I think the parameters would be like what we've talked about um, that it's one or two locations. Um, that it's something I that- I would keep it to one location. When I meant by like either an, an interior and an exterior, uh, at the, possibly at the same location. Yeah. Um, that um, preferably an interior, because you have more control. Um, and and uh, with minimal, no more than two or three characters. Um, and um, something that can be shot in a 12 hour day. Um, I'm not opposed to splitting it up into a, a Saturday and a Sunday, but I, I'm open to the initially trying it, doing it all in one day, if that's possible. Um, I like the idea of picking something and then having a pre-production meeting, um, whether we do it on Zoom, or we do it in person, either way is fine with me. Yeah, and I also wouldn't want to limit like a really great twist or script if it required, you know, one or two days of filming. Do you know what I mean? Like, because I, I, I because we had to get a different time or location, then I, I wouldn't want to limit. I will say that. that, okay, the more times- You move. Uh, no, but also the more times we meet in person, each time you meet in person, you will filter out more people who, are not gonna show up on production day. So like having the pre-production meeting in person- Sounds good to me. Is better because you will filter out the people who will not show up on production day. You'll have a better idea of who's actually gonna be there when you shoot. Because a Zoom meeting will have at least twice as many people who will show up in person. Well, how did you get 21 people to show up on your shoot? <laughs> that's yeah, 35 people show up at the pre-production meeting. Wow, that's <laughs> okay. Right, so it will reduce. FYI, and guys, um, I'm mainly an actor and a musician, uh, but I, you guys just gave me a great idea and I've already fleshed it out, so I'll pitch that next time. But I also have a half an acre up here in Silmar with a uh, uh, rock and roll studio in the garage, uh, horse, horses and horse stalls and a barn in the back and there's a property that wraps around that uh, an old guy just, just passed away, I can probably get access to, that has mostly a bunch of old uh, uh, junky cars and boats and stuff, can be used kind of a jet junkyard or kind of a, you know, a bit of a uh, hardware wilderness if it comes up as location. So just so you know. Thanks for sharing that. Do you do, do, you do uh, film composition music? I can. Okay, cool. That was something I really had a hard time finding. So knowing that we have um, one in the group. Just, is a, just I, you know, Ricard, oh. no, go ahead. I was going to say, I have a, a website that uh, like I have music and it's completely usable for short films, not features, but short films, free for like festivals, for everything. It's all included. I can send you. I mean, I'm happy to you know, yeah. put me on a credit for something. You're welcome to take all the music you want from there. It's what I'm going to use for my short film right now. Oh, cool. And it's like a lifetime, whatever. And it's, it's, you know, it's not feature films, but short films, they completely allow it. Film festival complete cleared for that. Well, so, and they have a lot of neat music. So I, I want to share something, what I use and there, you can find everything here pretty much. I'm going to, let me share this real quick. Let's see, where am I here? Uh, Okay, is that me? No. Yep. Yes. Wait, oops. Okay. Uh, let me share. Um, I use this and there's everything here. Uh, it's a subscription. It's like $15 a month. 
Uh, it's epic. I have that too. Yeah. Um, so the one caveat is in order to use a song for a short film, you have to pay an additional hundred license for each song. Song, but not for like, you know, background music, you know, for whether if you're doing a thriller or something like that. It, that would be- I, I would look at their licenses. Uh, the short film that I'm doing, like the one that I'm editing right now, I'm using their music. Mm -hmm. Um, and I did write to them about putting it in festivals and stuff. And they said to get the hundred dollar license for each piece of music that I use. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, so I mean, a hundred dollars is nothing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> compared to like how much you're going to pay for any song in any movie, a hundred dollars is peanuts. It's nothing. And a short film's not going to have more than one or two songs. So. I just put the audio.com as the name of it, ID with a double I. It's really oh. not that expensive. It's really, and they have a lot of different kind of music. Like my short film's going to have like a bunch of songs. <laughs> so it makes it affordable. Cool. So just to review quickly um, the, the criteria, what would you rec I recommend for the first film as simple as possible? We can yeah. build on that. If we do a good film, short, easy film first, we can then go to more advanced yep. down the line. Agreed. All right. Anybody have any questions? I, I just still have that concern about the insurance thing, only because I've had to use my insurance like I've broken things and I've had to use it. So I just get very nervous about, I mean, on, you know, on 50 all, people. On all matters finance related, whoever's being the director slash producer has to be responsible for that. What kind of insurance uh, do you have? Well, that's the thing. It just expired in April and I did not renew it because... I'm not in Florida doing videos anymore, so I did not renew it. Um, what what is what kind of policy? It's uh, it's with Film Emporium. Well. They're one of they're very fairly recognized and known. They're national, and you know the quote that they give you, you base it on so many projects per year, and you have full coverage. So like and I was approximately... paying about I was paying between fifteen hundred and twenty five hundred, depending if I wanted to have the property coverage for my equipment or not. So sometimes um, there was one year I didn't take the property, but so that's on an annual basis. Yeah, annually, and, and that it covers, you know, like so many, like large, like I didn't, you know, I because they don't really know how much I'm doing or whatever. Like I could say, like, oh yeah, okay, twenty projects. So even if I did more, like, so what? Like they're not, you know, they're gonna know. But at least I had an, you know, so I could do several projects and Can you post that uh the link in the website i'd like to check that uh, out i mean i don't have the I mean, link but it's link film and Empor emporium in the uh, chat so film emporium and i i was thinking of renewing if we're going to do films i'm happy to put it under my you know if, if it's going to get used i just did not want to renew you know twenty five hundred dollars for not using it <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, it could I be a little, if you had less projects, you yeah. know, more projects or less projects. So it's not a per film base. It's just an annual, you kind of give an average of how many projects, how much the income from those projects is, you know, they kind of, it's like a matrix. You have to like answer all these questions and then they say, oh, okay, this is how much you're covered for. So, you know, obviously the bigger productions, you know, the more you plan to incur people on sets they ask you do you have stunts do you have this so it kind of covers whatever you're going to need but i broke a crystal bowl that was um like six thousand dollars and it covered it <laughs> so i was like thank god <laughs> insurance that one instance made you a true believer yes <laughs> no i don't care about insurance i i i, I i'm more in favor of you know. being cautious and i i I'm definitely I agree I might you know I agree but I'm just saying there's just you know you have to pay attention because you don't realize that things can get broken yes. um, I have an idea why don't know. we I'll take out the insurance we shoot at my house you guys destroy my house <laughs> and then I'll put an insurance claim in and I'll get a totally remodeled how's that sound that sounds genius <laughs> that sounds like using the system right 
And I, I have- and it's especially good that you have this recorded, so there's no insurance. <laughs> exactly. Right. This, this recording's yeah, going this... nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to end this. It's eight twelve. I'll leave the room open for another ten minutes if everybody wants to chat. And uh, so I will set up a new meetup for next week, uh, same time, um, same. Uh, location and the purpose of that will be to pitch some ideas for getting into production within the next few weeks to do our first one again the most important thing for the first project is simplicity three to five minutes max one location uh whether interior exterior 12 hour day shoot one week prep before that and we will also uh, discuss next week uh, before we have our meeting. Once we decide on a project, if we decide next week, you know what people's roles are, what what they like to do, who has camera equipment, who has lighting equipment, and uh, we'll kind of lay that out. And um, I think uh, I think we're moving forward. Put the word out, guys, and uh, let's see if we can get. Uh, more people to participate in it and I the idea of turning out uh, one short film a month sounds fantastic uh, a little ambitious but one every couple months for sure I think that's reasonable and as we succeed in this and get uh, to know each other and get to know each other's uh, abilities um, we can uh, be more ambitious on the types of projects we uh, uh move forward on how's that sound Good to me all right i'm done guys I'll, like i said i'm going to turn the recording off so now you can say anything you want and um i'm going to keep the room open for a little while but thank you it's officially over